When we think about magic and witches and spell casting, most people are going to think about Hollywood, Halloween, and sort of just this uh, mythological creation that sort of just uh, meant to express the mystical, mysterious side of the human soul. But is there actually some truth to these mythologies? Is there any practical methods in which these expressions are real? Um, I, I, I'm going to argue that yes, there is, and that witchcraft is actually an appropriated perspective of shamanism and of different methods of achieving altered states of awareness and methods that help your perception of the world be blanketed upon other people. This is basically what spell casting is and um, what we're going to be talking about in this video. So, what is a spell? First, um, we talk about language and the importance of language and how language inspires a linguistic hallucination. It, it, it inspires a, a world in which we can make sense of. This is kind of a hard thing to break down, but you can kind of imagine it in the context or the language of television. You know, you have these people which have in the new age been called channels, channelers. They are a doorway or a station in which a certain world exists. They channel different, uh, different states of potential, different states of possibility. It's ironically even in the name Hollywood. Back in pagan England, there were druids, and druids would carve this sacred wood out of holly, and they would use it in their rituals. So, in a sense, you can, you can almost view Hollywood as being an enchantment. It's being the channel to enchant or manifest a particular version of reality. This is actually what all of culture is. All of culture is a psychological trick. It's a, halluc it's a hallucination that is given to us through the language we are raised with, through the, through the symbols that we are raised with. The best example I can think about this is our, it's our version of capitalism and how we use these symbols and advertising and marketing to extract power from people. So we, so, you know, the, the corporations of the United States and around the world will beam an image out into the world, a beauty standard or a, uh, a, 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 a social standard that has all of us sort of running around trying to live up to this standard because it's being projected as a standard. But really all, the, all this is is a genius plan to extract power from you so that these people can take your power and, and ingest it into their own, you know, through the form of money, through the form of, of actual power, of, uh, you know, like in policy and things like this. When you start getting into spirituality and you start getting into things like Hinduism or Buddhism, you will see how psychologically brilliant these people were. They understood the power of language and this is why they talk about mantras and the different uh different things that we tell ourselves is the the inspiration that we see in the world you know if you're an angry person you see an angry world if you're a happy person a happy world is reflected to you so you can think of it in the way of i've used this example before but like a tree and dirt or soil we use this compartmentalization so that we can elaborate on these objects. We say, okay, this is a tree. The tree has these qualities. The dirt has these qualities. But in reality, if we, if we take a step back and we examine the true essence of what we are elaborating on, you can see that the tree cannot exist without the, the soil that it comes out of and vice versa. So these things, they, uh, they 
ultimately imply each other. The tree and the soil are one thing, but we use this linguistic symbolism to manifest the world. Alan Watts used to say that we confuse the world with the way that we describe it. And uh, we're lost in this. This is what spells are, is, is this sort of mirage or this sort of chaos of flowing thoughts from one thought to another, never actually settling and being able to just examine the stillness of what is actually happening, what reality actually is. But through culture, through uh, politics, we get lost in this whirlwind of ideas that is being constantly just, you know, uh, tidal waved upon us that we can't ever just get a break and actually get a glimpse of self-awareness because we are constantly being told who we are since birth. Our parents, our grandparents, and so on and so on have also been lost in this sauce. So it's just sort of this uh, sluggish swamp that we have been dragging ourselves through through generation and generation. Um, with this lack of self-awareness because the people in power benefit from this lack of self-awareness so they give us the narrative of our lives they say this is who you are this is who you are and through us taking on this this false identity it creates the world that we are now in where normal people are constantly exploited and there's a few people at the top that benefit and uh, to me this is a practical form of witchcraft so whether or not these people are intentionally you know, like wearing shrouds and holding wands of Hollywood. I don't know if that is going on. I mean, you can argue that it is uh, through places like Skull and Bones in Yale or Bohemian Grove in Monte Rio, just outside San Francisco in California. There are these places that give a sort of nudge or a sort of, uh, a sort of high five to the past where these rituals were, were alive and thriving and, and they still are today because there are politicians practicing these things in those places like Bohemian Grove. So a cult, a culture is a group of people experiencing a collective reality. Religion is a cult. These people are experiencing a collective hallucination that the people on the outside aren't experiencing. Everyone in their religion is totally convinced that their religion is the religion, right? And the people on the outside are convinced that their religion is their religion. It's because they are lost in a, in a linguistic binding that produces a vision of reality. And um, this, this shared belief gets passed down and expressed. This is what culture is. So the culture is a good example of what spells are. And you know, they, 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 that's why we call it spelling. We call it spelling because our words are what make reality. Our, our shared ideas is what manifests this. And this is why it constantly changes and evolves with ideas, reality. You know, people used to think, uh, you know, uh, tribal people had all kinds of different beliefs that they came from aliens or they came from snakes in the water or that the ant people uh, were the ones that gave birth to the first human civilization. There's tons of different ideas that have been lost or e evolved throughout time. I hope that kind of makes sense. And I hope next time you turn on Fox News, you try to examine it from a third person, from someone on the outside. Because it's so easy when, when, when our identity is fully locked into something like patriotism. This is another good example of what a spell is. A spell like these people at the top that benefit from war and that benefit from the power that is extracted from war they tell you that you must be patriotic, you must fight for the freedom of the people in your country. And many people get lost in this illusion that if we aren't, you know, blowing people up in Palestine or in the Middle East or in somewhere in like South America, then, then our safety is somehow compromised. But of course, this is a hallucination, a spell that is cast upon you so that you will give your power to somebody else that benefits from it. 
Um, and that, I don't mean to get too like political about it, but this is just an example. I, I do recognize that there are moments in which we must fight, you know, like Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita or something. So I'm not like against, uh, I'm not against being smart about our, our lives and the things that we need to do to protect our country. But what I'm saying is that most of the time this isn't real and it's mostly just uh, this game of war and power. Anyways, my name is Dakota. This is my YouTube channel. I try to elaborate on stuff like this often. It's a hard thing to talk about, but uh, but yeah, this is, I mean, this is uh, what sort of came out of my mouth this time around. Check out my YouTube channel. There's tons, there's tons for you to see on there in this sort of context if you want to go deeper into this rabbit hole. And I'm definitely going to go deeper into the rabbit hole, make more videos about this. Please leave a comment. Let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to talk about or elaborate on. And I will. Follow me on Instagram, Dakota Wint. Make sure to turn on the notifications. And look in the description for all, all this information. Um, yeah, catch you around.